The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Monday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN, Monday morning, 9.06 a.m. And we're going to kick things off with some fireworks this morning, folks. Right now, you're looking at an S&P down 1.75%. You heard it right. You're down 77 points. That's an extension of lower prices that we had coming at us on Friday. You're looking at an S&P trading at 43.44. You back things up just to 9.30 in the morning on Friday. You had a print of 44.62. You're talking about 120 points almost three full percent in the s p that we are trading down just basically since the open on the previous day of trading nasdaq 100 down a similar 1.7 percent you look where we are you're talking about almost 500 points in the nasdaq 100 from friday's open the dow below 34,000. you're talking about 1.9 percent in the negative down 657 points we haven't even started trading for the week yet and you got the russell down to staggering 2.54 percent russell always with some volatility and how about the vix volatility index this morning we saw a spike of 26.75 right now you're sitting at a level of 26.95 you take a look at the VIX, boy, you can't ignore that spike, right? I've talked about it in my newsletter uh, on a couple occasions, talked about it on the program a couple occasions in terms of lower lows and lower highs in that volatility index. Not so much the case. You got a VIX spiking back to a high that we haven't seen going back to May. That high in May was 28.93. Right now, you're spiking. I mean, look at this action just from Friday. Friday's action, you had an 18 handle on the VIX. We wake up this morning and you got a VIX trading at 26.18. And folks, it's hitting everywhere across all markets as you'd expect when you get this type of action to kick things off. It's Fed week as well. Interesting to add that onto everything going on. We got a Fed meeting starting tomorrow. We got a press conference on Wednesday, 2.30 uh, p.m. is the press conference. Two o'clock is the announcement. Uh, and it is hitting everything, as I said, even Bitcoin. Check out Bitcoin's action. We'll put it on a short-term chart. On Friday's action, you were sitting at about 48,000. Right now, you're talking about Bitcoin trading at 43,310, basically just under the lows that we had a week ago on Monday. Crude's down $1.45 to 7037. Gold, one of the things green on the board right now, you got gold trading at 1759. You're up $7.90 gold. Been quite a pullback you had on gold the last week in terms of you were uh, talking about, yeah, that's just five days ago. On Monday last week, you were trading just under 1800. You make it above that price point on Wednesday. And man, the sell off on Thursday in gold was dramatic. And you're just kind of sputtering right now uh, below those price levels. You jump down two notes in bonds, and that's where we're getting um, some higher price and lower yield. You're talking about a yield right now of 1.316%. You're down about five basis points. So you'd come into the session at about 1.37%. Let me take a look on the five minute to see the action here. Yield-wise, we came into, we ended Friday's session with a yield of about 1.37%. Just like that, we're trading with a yield of 1.316%. The 30-year is up more than a full point and five ticks right now, 163.24. And as we talked about that volatility index this morning, we're trading at 26.09. And let's just jump into some of these markets. I like to kick it off with some news. But man, the news this morning is the markets. And we're going to talk about some news after the break as well. Um, but I'm going to take a little bit of action in terms of where we are in some of these indices. Now, I've talked about on many occasions, right, the run that we've had. I mean, look at this, folks. Decisive break. Okay, I'm going to extend these to the right. I'm going to extend the top line. That doesn't matter as much right now. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm even going to back this up a little bit further to see the full context. Now, these channel lines we're dealing with in the S&P, to zoom it back in, Okay pretty defined doesn't get much more defined in terms of the upper boundary and the lower boundary right you were stuck on the upper boundary as we accelerated from the november lows we had a price point of about 3200 i think it's 3225 yes it is 3225 on the dot was the low 
in the S&Ps. Now, again, keep things in context, folks, as I give you kind of the bare case here. You're still 1,100 S&P points above where we were trading at last November. Did you hear that? 1,100 S&P points down where we were trading at last November, okay? Let alone, we're just below where we were trading at on August 19th. The low there was 43 47. You're basically just testing those lows that we had on August 19th. But man, did we get back there in a flash. Uh, and that's just one month ago, folks. All right. Things look crazy. Of course they do. But you're talking about an S&P within about 200 points of the all time highs. OK, and you're just back to a month ago in terms of where we were trading. But this is also the highs we had in July. But as you see, I mean, we were bumping up in terms of the upper boundary line early in the ascent to higher prices. But in May, you transition to the lower boundary line. And man, it just found that lower boundary line on three occasions almost perfectly. Whether it was in June, whether it was July, whether it was August, we caught a bid on all three summer months, right? June, July, August, higher prices. Guess what? We roll in Labor Day weekend comes at you. We come back from Labor Day weekend. There is the Friday before Labor Day, right? Friday before Labor Day. I mean, you can't make this stuff up. Friday before Labor Day, you're talking about a high of 45.50. We come back on Tuesday. Man, we have just seen negative prices. You did get that one reprieve last week where you got a bid. But other than that, it's been lower prices. And we're talking about 43.49. Now, again, I mean, that's a decisive break lower. Haven't seen it. And as I talked about, so this trend line really originates in November in the S&P. You can put it up. It's just on a daily in your charts, folks, okay? But you look at this in terms of where we are. What was so cool about this trend line is if you take where we are in November, you push it to the left, pretty well defined going back to the COVID lows almost. And look at that break, folks. That is a decisive break on two straight days. We're well below that channel line now. Not what you want to see. Now, the NASDAQ 100, a little bit of a different story, okay? Uh, we had some trades going on in my newsletter, Rocket Equities and Options. You can check it out on the front page, TFNN, folks, under the newsletter tab. All the newsletters we do come with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Um, and we were going a little bearish in the NASDAQ 100 here. The reason why is that you have the NASDAQ 100 bumping up against the upper boundary line, okay? You come in to the Labor Day weekend. There is July, uh, excuse me, there is September 3rd. You actually have a high on the Tuesday back from Labor Day, 15,708. And just like that, we're down more than 600 points from that price point. You were trading above 15,500 on Friday. And just like that, you give up almost 500 points from that action. Now, what to think about here, when you take a look at the NASDAQ 100, okay, this is going back to, again, where the markets really started accelerating. You had November. You came off a low in March. You came off another low in May. OK, and then you correlate the highs that we had back in February. You match that up to some of the higher areas we had back in July, in August. And that brings you to an area of 15,708 just recently. And man, you make it to the bottom line of that trend channel, folks. And that would correlate to November 2nd, to March, to the lows of May. You're talking about maybe another five, six, seven hundred points. And that would just be a trade to the lower boundary line of an of an upward channel, folks. That's not even breaking the channel in the NASDAQ 100. Uh, Dow, different story as well, accelerating lower in a big way. Uh, Dow didn't quite match up on the channel to the lows of November, but if you take that out of the equation, pretty well defined in terms of these lows you had, whether it was February, the lows of March, the lows of June, the lows of July, the lows of August, and man, we break lower in a big way. Where are we gonna go, folks? Where is the pain? Where is it gonna stop? We'll find out. Stay tuned, folks. we got a lot to talk about for Monday trading. Come back. It's Fed Week as well. We'll be right back in three minutes. Folks. Golden ratios give shape to everything in our world. Represented in the Fibonacci sequence, these special numbers define the patterns that make up our universe. Not even markets can escape the omnipotence of these ratios. Larry Pesavento is a 45-year market veteran who has published nearly a dozen books on the powerful patterns we find in nature and their relationships with the ever-elusive markets. Larry's newsletter, Fibonacci 24-7, will teach you to harness the power of these natural golden ratios in order to create successful trades. Fibonacci 24-7 is designed to teach the tools you need to identify and act on these undeniable and reoccurring patterns. Sign up for Larry's newsletter, Fibonacci 24-7, and you will also receive free access to his trading webinar, Trading Strong Trending Markets. Try out Larry's newsletter risk-free 
All of TFNN's newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. I got a chart of the queues up here. We're trading down about $6 right now from 373.83 on Friday. We're trading at 367.91. You were as low as under 367 at about 8.30 an hour ago this morning. Got about 12 minutes to go until the opening bell. And you take a look at the queues here. Uh, as I talked about in the NASDAQ 100, obviously, trading in comparison to the queues, uh, where you go. Now, they have a nice defined channel line as well. And I was talking about you're bumping up against the upper boundary line. You trade to the lower boundary line. You're talking about maybe 350, give or take. Now, what I'm looking at on this chart, if you're in the queues here, uh, all the way back to July 19th, that's the last area. Maybe that's the low you head to. Now, 360 is sticking out on this chart, of course. That's where you really accelerated higher about a month ago on August 19th. Okay, but we had 64 million shares traded on July 19th. Uh, maybe that's the next step. And the reason why I pinpoint that as well is because that would bring it down to the lower boundary line. Um, you know, you work out time a little bit forward. That is going to basically correlate to that lower boundary line. Now, it throws a little bit of a wrench into this, okay? If you are short, a little tough being short in the market when you come into Fed Week and Chairman Powell has shown that he is uh, committed, let's just say, committed to trying to stimulate this economy the best he can until full employment is restored, right? We are nowhere near full employment. And for some of the data we got last week, we got a soft CPI number. That's going to give Chairman Powell some ammunition this week to say the transitive natures in inflation is what he's seeing, causing them not to have to rush to whether it's pareback stimulus, whether it's uh, raised rates. Don't see that coming anytime soon. But I'm not sure I see the market completely falling out of bed with Chairman Powell having a meeting and a press conference and the ability to put out some calming words there. Not sure it'll happen, folks, because we got a lot going on. And there's only so much the Fed can do, as we've seen on a day that we get the markets down one to two to two and a half percent across the board right now. And what's it have to do with? It has to do with a lot of things, folks. It's got to do with valuations. It's got to do with the fact that we're so far away from full employment right now. It does have to do with some of the Delta variants going on, folks. We are, unfortunately, it's almost mind-boggling. I had to check it. My friends were talking about it. We're back above 2,000 deaths a day. It's just uh, a tragedy of epic proportions that we're losing 2,000 Americans every single day to this virus that we have a vaccine for. Nonetheless, that's where we currently sit right now. Uh, one of the things out there, though, that is having a dramatic impact is 
uh, Evergrande over in China. Um, that Chinese real estate market. Uh, how far will President Xi go with his crackdown on China's real estate sector? Well, we're going to find out as uh, fears of contagion ripping across the markets having an impact for sure. The question has suddenly become an urgent one on trading desks around the world after months of treating the crisis at indebted developer China Evergrande Group as largely contained. Investors on Monday rushed to price in the risk that Xi will miscalculate as he tries to curb China's property market excess is without derailing the economy. Uh, part of what they talk about here, economists uh, assign a 30% probability to a hard landing. The resulting market turbulence may add pressure on pressure on Chinese leaders to tap the brakes on policy tightening or at least take steps to limit the fallout. Goldman Sachs called for authorities to send a clearer message. I've talked about it on the show before as well, folks. Uh, President Xi over there, he has a plan for the next 10 to 20 years, not the next 10 to 20 days, okay? Um, even though most people don't expect Evergrande to collapse, all of a sudden the silence and a lack of major actions from poly policy makers is making everyone panic, as they say. Uh, and then you have over here, gauge of developers in Hong Kong plunges for a five-year low over there. And I think we had the Hong Kong Hang Seng down, let me pull it up here, 3 point something percent, I think it was. What are we, 3.3 percent, you got the Hang Sang done, down. Uh, Evergrande shares were plunging 10 percent as other property uh, shares fall. That's the headline over there at CNBC. <coughs> Excuse me. And you can see the dramatic impact, folks. And I would just be, anytime you got China in the mix, watch out. Protect yourself. Have those spikes up on your back, folks. Um, I mean, I watched a video last week of China, and this was from a month or two ago, maybe a few months back, just demolishing like half of a city that was kind of half built because they were just building so fast. Things collapsed. They have all these half built high rises all over some cities. They just decided to tear them all down because they weren't getting built anytime soon. I thought it was actually. Um, just a, a graphic artist display. I didn't think it was real when I first saw it because I saw it was like 15 half-built high-rises all collapsing, all being exploded and demolished at the same time. No, that was China figuring out that guess what? They got a little bit ahead of themselves and they were just going to start wiping out half-built cities because they were such a mark on everything that they were doing out there. It's a big deal in a big way. Uh, so that, I mean, that could play out in a big way. I mean, you know, look at Evergrande stock in Hong Kong, right? You're talking about going March of this year at 1650. Yeah, you're trading at peanuts right now for two dollars, folks, in a big way. Um, and as they say, they you know insurers listed also dropped. You had one insurer down five percent. You had another one down five point seven percent there. Um, it's it's you never quite know. As my dad put in his newsletter today, who is holding all that risk? And sometimes it takes a couple months to come out in terms of where that risk really lies across cross markets uh and you're seeing some fear in our markets this morning that that might start to hit some of that as well i mean they're just assets in some way uh and you'll see how that plays out markets getting a little bit of a bid right now off of the lows let's jump over to some of the fang stocks as we got the nasdaq down dramatically you got amazon holding up relatively well in the face of everything going on you're down 60 dollars right now um uh, Trading at 34 bucks, you're just down to Wednesday's lows. I mean, all the tech stocks, of course, down dramatically when you got the markets getting hammered so harsh. Microsoft really traded lower on Friday. You're lower again today, down by about three dollars to 297. App, whoops, Apple shares trading from 149 on Friday. You were below 143 to start off the day. Tesla shares lower today as well. They were dealing with their own woes, down from 760 to about 734. We'll jump to some of the social media companies. Facebook shares down as well. Not gonna find many stocks uh, in positive territory today. Even the lights, likes of crypto, you got Coinbase down about 12 bucks and we talked about Bitcoin down about $3,300. We'll jump over to Ethereum, another one people love to follow. Uh, flirted with under 3,000. We were just trading at 3,600 on Thursday, under 3,000 yet again, taking a look at the daily, uh, back to an area that we did have support in Ethereum in early August. But man, these crypto sectors, folks, you start seeing the market reverberate like this. There's not many things that are not going to get hit when you got a market trading down one to two to two and a half percent to kick things off. The Russell down just over two percent right now. Russell uh, trend line, not really uh, applicable right now. But I mean, this Russell just straight out in a consolidation. I'm going to take off these trend lines. Whoops. 
Let's delete that one. Let's delete that one because those trends do not exist because what does exist, folks, we're going to activate that drawing. The Russell is in a straight out consolidation for the better part of this year with a bottom portion of about 2100 we're trading at 2180 right now the top portion about 2360 uh which we had the all-time highs going back to march crazy you gotta go all the way back to march to get an all-time high in the russell but man russell watch out maybe 2100 is an area look for a little bit of uh buying activity in the russell as we've seen a bounce on one two three four five occasions uh looks like we're on our way to that price level right now all right folks stay tuned we're gonna come back in three minutes come back for that market open we'll see where we open and that's gonna be an exciting one for sure are the bulls ready for the open are the bears ready for the open we got a vix trading at 2566 right now folks that is some volatility premium and it is fed week as well stay tuned folks we come back see what else we have on tap for the week's trading we'll be right back Are you having fun trading the markets but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got markets open and we got the markets in negative territory, to say the least. You're talking about an S&P negative by 73 points, folks. You're talking about an NASDAQ 100 negative 264 points. Dow off 580 right now. The Russell off 50. Taking a look at the dollar index right now. You're looking at a dollar index trading at 93 
33. That is up about 14 basis points. So you got dollar strength right now um, on a day that we got weakness across the markets, uh, to say the least. And you're catching negative action in these markets, to say the least, as well. As we're talking about a price point right now, excuse me. That is really rocking um, as we have all of these markets really hitting new prices. Uh, yeah, even negative territory in the open. Pulling back the charts here, I got up. You're looking at uh, S&Ps making negative 75, NASDAQ negative 275 right now. Dow just about 600 points in the red. And let's jump back to some of the stories. So staying on Evergrande real quick, okay? Where we got? I got a couple, couple stories out here. Let's see which one. This is the one I want to talk about. So this gets into some of the nuts and bolts in terms of the interest rates they're really dealing with here. Evergrande moment of truth arrives with bond payment deadline. Embattled developer is due to pay interest on notes Thursday. Uh, and they're talking about, I think it's $85 million. Where are we at here? There it is. $83.5 million of interest on 8.25% notes, five-year dollar bond. Uh, that is due on Thursday. There's a 30-day period before missed payments considered a default, according to the bond's covenants. Evergrande needs to pay 36 million coupon on an onshore bond the same day. In total, Evergrande has 669 million in coupon payments coming due through the end of this year. Some 615 million of that is on dollar bonds. Uh, watch out, folks. That is a big one in a big way. Um, and man, you talk about some max pain if they start dealing with that, folks. That is going to be max pain in a big way um, in terms of where that ends up resting in that market. Just give me one second. There we go. All right. Excuse me as I pull that up there. Okay, let's jump around to some of the other stories we have going on in terms of what is shaping these markets. We're going to jump to Morgan Stanley. Uh, surprise, surprise, Morgan Stanley sees the potential of a 20% drop in the S&P 500 growing. Well, I wonder when they uh, put that out because, yeah, we're going to be there before we know it, folks. You talk about the S&P, my goodness. Now, we're catching a bid right now in the markets. You put this back to a 15-minute. Uh, we're talking about an S&P. Let's put it on a daily real quick to figure out what we're talking about for 20%. So what are we talking about 20%? If you're trading at 45, 49, uh, you're talking about price point of, yeah, I mean, we could, we're down 200 points already, folks, in this index. Let's back it up a little bit. Let's put it on a three-year weekly. I mean, you're talking about 10% would be about 450 considered you got to think about that we started off 2020 at a price point of 32.25 doesn't mean it would drop out of bed in terms of being and i'm getting some delayed data there we go okay caught up as this market is moving so quick here 43.63 right now in the s p's you're already up 23 points right now in terms of that index popping we get the nasdaq 100 popping as well 15,117. you actually spiked to 15,035 on the open crazy action as we talk about in the dow off about 508 right now and yeah, we get into this, but you know, you're going to hear more of this talk as we get this type of volatility, folks. When you get a VIX trading at a 26, um, you better believe that there's the probability that you could get a 20% pullback in these markets. We just got a three to four percent pullback in the last two days. Um, in a note on Monday, the strategist laid out two directions for the U.S. market. They dubbed as fire and ice. The fire outcome, the more optimistic view, the Federal Reserve pulls away stimulus to keep the economy from running too hot. The typical fire outcome would lead to a modest and healthy 10% correction. But it's the more bearish ice scenario that's gaining traction, the strategist said, laying out a picture in which the economy sharply decelerates, earnings get squeezed. Stocks globally fell on Monday and concerned that the debt crisis in China Evergrande could impact the broader financial system. And uh, yeah, as they talk about, down dramatically from those price levels in a big way. All right, let's jump around to what we got going on in terms of stocks making moves. Where are we? Here we go. Let's jump down the line to some of the specific equities moving today with some news. China Evergrande on the top of the list continually. Uh, what we do have out today is that you have Pfizer um, talking about in their trial showed COVID vaccine was safe and effective when used in children 5 to 11. Pfizer and partner BioNTech said they would submit the results for approval as soon as possible. Uh, Pfizer with the market trading down 
this morning. But that's encouraging news on the humanity front, folks, because that is the last piece of this puzzle, getting kids vaccinated. I got two kids uh, young in the house below the age of five right now. Actually, one of them going to be turning five shortly. Um, he's in pre-K. You know, you got a bunch of kids in pre-K right now. Um, in Florida, and I get calls every single day, folks, of positive cases, and none of those kids have the ability to get vaccinated. That will be, I think, the last step. You get kids vaccinated, then it really does become a personal, personal accountability issue in terms of getting vaccinated. It's a real bummer with 2,000 people dying every single day, and bummer doesn't even encompass it, doesn't even do it justice. But there's not much else to be said on that front. But Pfizer coming up with that data and looks to be uh, five to 11 year olds coming up. And I think it'll be two year olds to five year olds shortly after that. All right. What else we got? The oil stocks uh, trading lower. You had oil dropping about a buck 50. So not surprising. You got some of these stocks in lower territory. Colgate Palm Olive, the consumer staple stop upgraded to a buy from a hold at Deutsche Bank. The investment term firm said Colgate's difficulties with inflation and in some international markets was already priced into the stock. What's their symbol? Colgate Palm Olive. My, my computer's a little bit slow right now as we rock. Let's see. Yeah, CL. And look at that. In a, in a red market, that upgrade holding steady up 1.1% for Colgate Palm Olive right now on that upgrade. JP Morgan bank stock slid in unison. Lost you in the den. Okay, I'm, yeah, I'm getting a little bit of, sorry, let me get back in there. Okay, I'm not in the den, huh? All right, one second. Excuse me one second. These computers moving too fast today. What's going on? I'm coming back. I'm coming back. Give me one moment. There we go. All right, I'm back in the den. Here come my charts. All right, there are my charts, and there's a chart of Colgate Palm Olive up about a percent right now at 76.97, uh, with the market deep in the red. We have caught a bid though. I mean, if you were really uh, not afraid, but if you were thinking negative action was going to fly on the open and you could make that argument, uh, maybe the bulls holding their breath right now with the markets catching a slight bid. And I say slight. I mean, anytime you get this type of move, right? 830 in the morning, we're trading at 15,048. You're trading 15,112 right now. Still have the S&Ps down 60 points. Yes, 62 points right now, but you're 20 points off the lows we had this morning. Jumping around to some of the other equities as I was jumping through. Uh, the only other one I want to touch on was uh, the ARC Innovation, down 2.75%. Not surprising when you think that you got all the big dogs in the tech stock straight and lower in a big way. And let's see what they got. So Coinbase, we already talked about. DraftKings, Square, let's see how they're doing. What's going to happen? On days like this, the volatile stocks are going to be even more volatile, right? Square is down 2.9%. Let's say Coinbase down 4.67%. Tesla shares catching a little bit of bid, still down 2.7%. We'll jump into some of those equities and we'll get right back, folks. Stay tuned. I'll be right back. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. 
Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&P is negative by 54 points. All the markets just kind of hanging out close to where we kicked off the session right now. A little bit of a lift on the opening bell. We get the Dow catching a bit. Look at that. You're up 250 points from where we were on the lows, almost 300 points from the lows right now, 34,040. And the Russell trading down 46 points right now. I mean, anytime you get an open, folks, down this dramatic, um, I mean, it's, it's not like I saw the action tilting to a market where you had the NASDAQ down 1.7% on the open? Were you really going to extend things to 2.7% uh, down on the open, on the opening bell? You know, that's where you get into the standard deviation, the likelihood of a move. I mean, you're one standard deviation, you're two standard deviations away from the norm in terms of what you in terms of the statistical probabilities of those moves extending. Uh, catching a bid right now, but doesn't mean that the day's negative action is done. You take a look at on a 30 minute on the daily i mean it was a it was a pretty consistent week last week if you look where we were right it looks like nothing compared to what we saw on friday and on today but man we had some big sell-offs last week where it was monday you sold off but you came in at higher prices so it didn't look so bad tuesday you sold off as well you had a two-way market wednesday you did accelerate higher thursday you sold off Pre, um, in the beginning and traded higher than Friday and today. It's been all negative action. This is the first time we've had a real bar to the upside in Friday and Monday's action. NASDAQ 100 down about 201 so far. All right, jumping around to other articles I had out here in terms of what we're talking about. Bitcoin trading lower with the market. 10% to 43,000 as risky assets tumble globally. Regulatory concerns intensify that's one way to put it i would put it as in they're selling everything folks they're selling everything in a big way uh the only thing up on my chart right now i've got i got gold up about seven bucks right silver's up four pennies right now at 2238 that was after they both had some harsh days on thursday and friday you look at the run we had in gold last week on wednesday you were up at almost 1810 you're trading at 1758 and then we got notes and bonds of course a uh, little bit of a reversal of the note and bond action as well so everything kind of reversing slightly on the open right now i emphasize slightly on the open right now as we have the 10-year up nine ticks right now at 13302 at 8 a.m usi is 13309 so we've pulled back about seven ticks already on the 10 year. Let's take a look at some of the stocks that I like to take a look at. Disney down 1.75% today, taking a look at the daily on Disney. Disney, November 117, you get efficacy on the vaccine. You trade up to 203. Uh, if you're looking to get into Disney, 170 is a great point. Not sure you're gonna get back there, but man, that's been an area of support, whether you get back to May, you get back to July, August, kind of just been in consolidation uh, for the better part since May 
in Disney at 180. Uber's really been trading lower in a big way. You're trading at 39.53 now. Uber putting this a little longer term time frame. We'll put it. Whoops, excuse me. We'll put it on a weekly. Uh, the full run from the COVID lows at 1371. You're up to 6405. You're right at the 50%. You've been chopping around there. Now I'm going to take this one off here to show you. If you take a look, I mean, we're talking about you are almost back, folks. So where we were prior to having any information of the vaccines, uh, I mean, Uber's getting to an area. You get down to $35. You know, you're talking about almost cut in half here. It's tough buying an equity that's pulling back like this you got to get your stops in place because there's something wrong right now with what's going on in uber trading down from 64 to 40 dollars and you're back to an area of where the world didn't have vaccines um, think about the impact on a company like uber's businesses in terms of how that should have transformed their businesses even though we're getting like the third or fourth wave right now right things are taking longer than we thought we still have amazing vaccines, folks, that should be able to get us over this hump. That was not the case until November. I mean, it's almost hard to remember the rhetoric prior to this vaccine data. Um, I believe some of what they talked about was that they would need it to be 50 to 60 percent effective for it to make sense at all. Um, now, yeah, some of that efficacy might have wane versus Delta. It might wane over time. The battle of the boosters going on on Friday as well. But nonetheless, I mean, we got some pretty powerful vaccines that should be able to get us over this hump. It should be able to help with severe disease and illness. It should be able to help the economy. The world is behind the U.S. in terms of vaccination taking a longer time. But the future is there. And uh, Uber just paying the price in a big way, trading lower to 39.44. When you look at that run it had in November, this is a week. The low on that weekly bar is 34.06. Uh, we're trading at 39.42 right now on Uber. Jumping back to the markets, drifting a little bit south with the S&Ps down about 60, NASDAQ down about 212 right now. Let's take a look at some of those FANG stocks and see how they're trading. Microsoft shares down about 8 tenths percent. Not that bad when you look at where the market is, right? You got the NASDAQ 100 right now down 1.4 percent. You got Microsoft down 8 tenths percent. You got Apple shares down 1.2 percent right now. Google shares trading lower by 2% on the dot, 2773. Let's take a look at Google. Uh, now, this thing, my goodness. I'm going to take this Fibonacci number off there for some clarity. This has just been a one way rocket ship, folks. And take, uh, if you're in Google, uh, you're bumping up, coming to that lower boundary line, about 27, let's see. <coughs> Excuse me. 2730, about, we'll, we'll, we'll send you to the bottom line of that channel line. And I'm going to back this up even further. You can see the run in Google, you could say started in October, right? The market really takes off on October 29th. They had earnings on that level as well. So you had earnings, you had an election, you had vaccine efficacy, um, and Uber's been in a straight shot. And look how defined it is. On the bottom side of that, you have it matching up, whether it was the lows in January, the lower area in March, the lower area in May. Then Google really starts to accelerate to the top side. And look at the top side. You pair it with the November high. You pair it to the highs in February. You pair it to the highs we had in April. Matches that level in July, touches that level in August. Um, so, you know, if you're looking for Google, not sure these trend lines are going to hold forever, folks. I mean, Google just traded from 1600 to 2700 in that channel line. But remarkable that you're still within that channel line in Google for the next $40 or so to the downside from where we're trading right now. All right, let's take a look at the VIX and see how we're trading right now. We got a VIX trading 2447, pairing some of those gains. You back up to where we are. You're now below the spike we had in August. You did get that higher spike, though, folks. And that's the first time. I mean, look at this chart, right? Lower lows, lower highs going all the way back to, I mean, almost all the way back to June of last year. Uh, you really look at where we were in October of last year before we got the vaccine efficacy. You were pushing 4116. That was coming into the election, too, right? A very elevated VIX when we had an election up for grabs. We had uh, vaccine data due, and man, just the market accelerates higher. We plow higher in a big way, and the VIX just sucks out to 1951. We've been dealing with 1538 VIX back in April, 1425 VIX back in June. Lower highs, and then boom. Pay attention to that, folks, because the VIX telling you that it's not lower highs anymore. Um, on a day that we are coming into Fed Week as well, 
That's the other interesting part of this, right? How that is going to shape Chairman Powell's press conference. We're going to find out on Wednesday, folks. We got a meeting starting tomorrow. We got a press conference at 2.30 on Wednesday. Uh, with that in mind, stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back to finish up the show.